No bluffing, no bluffing boxing. We're back. We, we back to talk that boxing. Um, we had a we had a, a big event this weekend. Devin Haney <clears throat> put on a clinic versus Regis Rougarou Pro Gray. What'd you think about the fight, Rashad? Annihilation, man. Um, I mean, you saw greatness. I mean, that was like one of the best displays of like real boxing and one of the most embarrassing fights for any <laughs> champion. Like for real. Like I felt for Regis in that one. Like, whew, it was rough. Yeah. Is there is there like even John, you watching it like hey, what was you thinking? Yeah, like, what was you, you thinking when you for was the game, watching it, you watching this? Look, them you, boxing, he didn't even text back. Them boxing matches, look, if I'm on the East Coast, I stay up and watch it. Like, like I, I stayed up for that one. Mm -hmm. The Garcia, we were out here, so it was earlier, yeah. But like you said, it was one sided, and, and we tried to get Regis in here. I'm glad we didn't. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't, cause look, but but Devin, I feel like he's just solidifying himself. Like all that talking, you know, him and his pops, he backing it up. Mm -hmm. That's that's all I can say. No, for yeah. sure. Like he showed greatness. I mean, when we went and watched Devin, uh, not Devin, when we went and watched Regis spar, like. I saw something I was telling you weeks ago, like when we talked about it, like I just saw Regis' feet, like, and I'm just like, I don't know how. Like, even when we did the podcast, I said it, I don't know how he's gonna compete with him with his feet like that. Like, I said, if Regis did win, it would have to be by knockout. Yeah. But Devin, I saw Devin outclassing him. Like, he, he's got the best feet in the game. And people don't even realize, like, like a football player, like, great cornerbacks know how to use their feet. 100%. Great fighters, know how to use their feet, and that creates distance. Like, people think dancing around the ring, like, they, they think that that's footwork. No. Footwork is when you control distance, control range, like, ring generalship. Like, and Devin showed he's got the best feet in boxing. Yeah. They talk about Lomachenko. Lomachenko does fancy little moves, but Devin controls you with his feet, puts himself in the places he needs to be to make his offense work, and his defense is right behind it. Do you think that with that fight, because that was an entertaining performance by Devin. No, it was you, great. Now, there was, you know, a, a stigma or a narrative on mm -hmm. him where people were saying, oh, he's a boring fighter. Now, in this fight, we saw him still be technically sound and defensive, but he was rip. I seen him rip off multiple four and five punch combinations. Do you think with this performance, he was able to get rid of that stigma of, oh, he's a boring fighter? I mean, a lot of people aren't real boxing fans. A lot of people just want to see a fight. Mm -hmm. People that really understand boxing, they knew how good Devin was and how he controlled guys. Like... Honestly, I never saw a boring fight from Devin. Like, the Lomachenko fight it was born in the very beginning, some can say, but Devin always rips off combinations, always boxes well, uses speed, movement, and, and he doesn't go far like Shakur. I know you're going to get to that. Yeah. We saw Shakur at times run. We saw now, now, when you talk about footwork and movement, like, what's the difference in, like, ring generalship boxing versus like being a boxer and a mover right. versus somebody that you feel like, like Shakur fight, he was just kind of like running all fight. Like Sh what's the difference in that? I mean, Shakur definitely ran. I mean, when you use ring generalship, your movement in the ring, your feet put you in position to make another offensive move and a defensive move. Like a lot of times we saw Shakur getting out of there. Like he didn't even stick around. Like he would make a good defensive move and we saw him go from corner to corner at times. Like that's not ring generalship. You know what I mean? And I get it. He said he had one hand, but... You gotta like you gotta be able to control a guy, like make him miss, make him pay. Every movement has to be for a reason. And Devin showed, I mean, I always thought he showed that. Like the Lomachenko fight, everybody kind of gave him shit. But before that, everybody was high on him. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He's not a big puncher, he's not a one-punch knocker artist, but he's a assassin. Like mm -hmm. he just put shots together, all angles, just I mean, he just breaks guys he down. Was, John, he was in there uppercutting. He was in there uppercutting, going to hook into the bot. Like he was, he was throwing them. He looked like a technician. Like no, for sure. From what I see, I I wasn't too familiar with Regis before this, but the thing I got was he's a puncher. He's a puncher. Devin wasn't getting punched. <laughs> he wasn't the lowest, getting punched. The, he only landed. He like, broke a record. He, now, the Shakur fight. Um, the dude Shakur fought. Had the record, and now now um, Regis broke the record. But the, the lowest punches is he, landed. But the difference the is Devin was actually punching while yeah. this was happening. Yeah, I, I think man, what do you think, John? What you think about his what you think about his power? Like people saying, oh, he pillow fisted. He don't got yeah. no power. We seen him put him to the ground. We seen but him. I think he threw, him a he few threw like a, a straight like and put straight him straight right hand. Yeah, straight right hand. Put him down. So. That got to be power. But but like you said, this is what I'm taking note of. Like I said, I'm learning as we go. Timing. Perfect timing. I yeah, think Regis had quick. threw a punch. 
and he just it hit him right at the boop. But the lead, him. but he threw a lead right hand and caught Regis just right on the button. Like, yep. I think Regis was trying to step in, mm-hmm. caught him with it. Yes, like, like then we saw him wobble Regis a you know few what I'm times. Yeah, he was. I like, feel like he could have stopped him. I he feel like stumbled. he could have stopped. Him. He could, but he, he was, he was very disciplined though. You know what I'm saying? Like he was very disciplined in the fight. Like I feel like at the end of the day. Like, you saw something from Devin. Like, you saw maturity. Like, you saw him grow in that fight. Mm-hmm. Like, he sticks to the game plan. He reminds me of an Andre Ward or how Floyd is. Like, it's only so many fighters that I've seen actually be disciplined enough to stick to the game plan and not come up out of themselves. Because there's been so many fighters that dominate a fight like that and go in for the kill and get knocked out. Right. But see, that I th- he learned from his own mistake. Now, if you remember the Lenares fight, he was wiping the floor with Lenares. Mm-hmm. And he, he kind of staggered Lenares. Then he went in for the kill and shot got caught. and got caught, and yeah. he got noodle leg, yeah. and that's why everybody starts saying, "Oh, he don't have no chin, this and that." So I think he learned from that. Like, I'm not gonna just run in there for it's the maturing. kill shot. I'm gonna just keep doing what I'm doing. And he's only 24. <laughs> yeah. Like, how scary is yeah. that? He's 24 years old. But see, yeah. that's discipline. That's discipline. That go across all sports. 100. Mm-hmm. And, and boxing, I feel like it gets magnified even more because you you get undisciplined. One shot could put you change down. Change the fight. Oh, it's out. over. It's over. Out or even change the like, whole fight. Change your whole fight. You lose the whole game plan. Mm-hmm. So discipline. I feel like he was. He said it after the fight. He said, "My dad told me da 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 da." Like he said, it, it was probably so hard for him not to want to just go all in. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, Regis was stumbling, but he stuck to the game plan, and that's what the the great ones do. Yeah. His his. I feel like he definitely. Look better. He looked more healthy and strong at 140. 100%. I don't think he should ever go down to 135 again. I think he looked like a skeleton down 100%. there. And and I think oh, for sure, like he even this fight, he came in, he weighed 140 on the dot. So yeah. that tells you how hard it is for him to have to get that extra five pounds off. Yeah. Like he probably was killing himself to make that. He put on a lot of muscle too. Yeah, like, like you could see the size on him. Like he fit 140. His whole stature was like okay, I can see him moving up the welterweight. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like you see a lot of guys and. They gained the weight like Charlo. When he gained the weight he in the fight, fat. he looked he looked flabby. flabby. He looked soft. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Devin looked strong. His wings, Solid. his lats were bigger. His back was bigger. He said he worked on legs a lot, and um, he showed he belonged. Yeah. yeah. He even said he his camp was easier. Mm-hmm. He said he could take some days to you know relax and work yeah, on other things. Yeah, he took a couple things. days off. He said, yeah, you're take right. Take a couple days off, so 140 might be. His his little zone, yeah. but that weight drains hard. But he also said one forty seven. Yeah, he talking about he might he might go up to one forty seven. How you feel about if it? They don't want no- <laughs> Man, listen, as great as he is, and I'm gonna say it, I ain't saying good. I'm saying great. Oh, a hundred percent. But I, my opinion, I think he should stay at one forty, dominate, get comfortable, like grow and mature a little bit more into his body. You get yeah. what I'm saying, like. As he matures, dominate the 140 division. Dominate. Yeah. Give you get you about four fights. Yeah. Then move up the world to right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, just circling back to this fight, what did y'all think about like Regis? Because I've seen people questioning, you know, what was his strategy? Um, questioning, you know, the the, you know, we're able to hear some of the things that said in the corner through the telecast mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, and now at post fight, I'm seeing, you know, shout out to the old boxing community. I follow all the, the boxing YouTubers. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll be tapped in and people are questioning like the corner. What yeah. do you think about his strategy? Um, you know, the adjustments. What, what did you what y'all think about that? I don't think they had a, they had another game plan other than the first one. The first one was to cut the ring off. But I mean, it's easy to tell somebody how to cut the ring off. But like I said, in watching him spar, I saw the worst footwork. I called a strength coach. And I talked to his coach, who's Bobby Benton. That was his first coach who brought him up. And I questioned Regis' footwork. And I've always questioned it. And the game plan was just to cut the ring off. So me personally, if I was coaching Regis, do I think he had a shot at winning? Slim to none. You know what I mean? But if he did, look, he's already a power puncher. Power is the last thing to ever leave you once you're a fighter. We know he can punch. We know he's strong. Work on his agility and his foot speed. The thing is, he can't cut off the ring. Because his feet not quick. Because his feet aren't there. Right. He's all over the place. You saw his feet, like they're crossing each other. It was bad. How Even in sparring, we saw that. We didn't no, say it, but we saw yeah. that. How are you going to cut off the ring if, if your feet are bad? The yeah. thing is, the number one thing, like a house, your foundation of your feet. I get it. Regis has always had bad feet. But it's times when I've seen him better. This fight, he couldn't touch Devin because he had no clue. You see him moving his head, slipping, feet aren't moving. You see him trying to punch, feet aren't moving. Number one thing, Work on his feet. The number one plan in this fight should have been 
work on his feet. Foot speed and agility. Are you trying to enhance speed? Are you trying to are you trying to to basically outbeat Devin in speed? No, you can never do that. But at the same time, you want to be able to make sure you can get to him. You him can't up. touch him. If your feet don't get you there. And all we saw was <laughs> yeah. a guy who was tumbling over his own feet, even yeah. when he got caught. When he got caught with that with that shot, I saw his back foot come up towards his right foot. Boom, right hand comes. Was he off balance right then and there? No, but at the same time, he's never on balance. Yeah. Like, that's just how he fights. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and it's worked for him, but all we see Regis in are tough Fights. We never seen a fighter really move, really give them trouble. They there, they there, they're in front of them. They there, there to, to get hit. hit. But yeah. we also haven't seen too many guys in boxing period with the kind of footwork that Devin has. You know what I'm saying? So I, I really, I felt like the corner didn't really have a good game plan. And honestly, I feel like in a fight of this magnitude, you don't change your corner. You don't change your corner for a fight like this. So he, like he he elevated somebody to be like his lead corner man. Yeah. So Julian Chua, who's a good trainer, I think he's one. Of the, I think he's a great teacher in boxing, but he's new. He's up and coming. That's you know the guy I mean? that looked like he had that little. Yeah, 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 yeah. Asian guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. He knows boxing. I love his boxing mind, but what he does is he's so he's so analytical. He mm. wants to break it down in the most simplistic form, but the most the, the the most difficult way. It's like sometimes you got to dumb it down. You yeah. know what I mean? His coach, you would see Bobby Benton, who's been with him the whole time, was doing a lot of talking in the corner. You got to go with what you're comfortable with going into a big fight. You can't switch your corner in one of the biggest fights of your career. You can't do that at the last minute. And be, for, It's a few things you got to understand, too. You don't want your corner beefing. You don't want no animosity in your corner. You don't want your trainers feeling like this and feeling like that. It's a lot that goes into a fight, and it's more of a mind game than it is a physical game. You get what I'm saying? And I think when you start putting that pollution into it, you add a lot of corruption to a fight. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It, it, it just adds problems. And I personally feel like he should have stuck to what worked, which was Bobby Benton being his head coach, Julian coming in and working with him. I just feel like it would have brought, it, it would have kept a lot more camaraderie in the corner. I look. I seen a lot of distance in the corner. I seen a lot of disconnect, and I seen a lot of nonchalantness. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of surprise. And a lot of surprise. It like, seemed like they didn't have a clue of like, no adjustments. Like I, I didn't see anything. Not now. What about the saying like everybody got a game plan until they start getting hit? <laughs> <in> the <face laughs> they get punched in the <laughs> mouth, right? <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, is there when somebody's like getting? Like he was. It's not just the fact he was getting like. Te like just technically whooped on. It was like he was kind of getting manhandled in there. Like, yeah. bro, Devin was grabbing him up, throwing him to the other side of the ring, like looking like the the, the stronger man in the ring. Like, is there even anything you can say? Like, he, and he at that point he's just gonna go to what he know anyway. I mean, at that point, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think there was anything you could have really said in that corner to really to really make a change. Mm -hmm. You could have given different advice, but. What I saw was a physical problem. I saw a guy who just has no feet, and that's something that wasn't specified and wasn't worked on in camp. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I would have drilled more than I would have drilled anything in camp. So yeah. you think his the biggest thing? Well, honestly, I don't even know what they did at camp. I don't know what the, what the corner was saying. From the outside looking in, it looked like your only out is to knock this dude out, is to give him your power. Yeah, but you can't hit a guy you can't catch. Correct. And that's the problem. Every time he tried, we saw in the beginning of the fight, we saw him laying like two straight left hands to the body, which were nice. And after Devin kind of felt him out, he saw, oh, his feet are bad. Because yeah. Devin, Devin and him even mentioned how bad his feet were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I will never forget, Bernard Hopkins told me this one time. He said, Rashad, he said, a great fighter can fight at any weight class. He said, one thing I did, that made me stick around so long was I worked on my feet. Yeah. He always worked on his feet. And so many fighters today, so many athletes, like they don't work on their feet. They don't work on their feet enough. You know, foot drills, foot drills, especially in boxing, it's number one. Your feet are gonna get you there. You know what I'm saying? It's like a car with no tires. Yeah. A car with bad tires, where you gonna be on the side of the road somewhere. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that's the number one thing with boxing. And I hate it because Regis, I've known him, known him a long time. Good dude. I hate to see him come from the depths that he came from, be able to make it as far as he did, and then be able to lose it at magnitude. On the like, biggest stage yeah. of his career. Biggest stage, and the thing was, he wasn't prepared. And yeah. I always blame that on corners. You know what I mean? It's a corner's job to prepare their fighter. Is like, even for football, okay, is there, is there such thing as, because I've seen uh, like tra other trainers and stuff, coaches, whatever say, in the, in the sport say, he looked like he may have overworked himself. Mm. Like, like 
is there such thing like even for football, like where you you overtrain for a game, like you you beat yourself up throughout the week getting ready to like when you get there, it's like you ain't really got nothing left. I think so, but the thing I'm thinking about is slow feet don't eat. That's any sport. I think yeah. that's universal no, for sure. in any sport. For Basketball, sure. football, soccer, 100%. baseball, Everything. tennis. That's your foundation. That's your foundation. So yeah. slow feet don't eat. But as far as that goes, I do think there's like an optimal point. You know what I'm saying? You never want to overtrain. You don't want to undertrain. There's an optimal point somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I will obviously wasn't there for his, but if he did overtrain, it showed. But yeah. I don't think you can yeah. overtrain for feet. I mean, you, speed, you foot can, speed and, you can and, overtrain for a fight. I mean, you can leave it all in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a seven, eight week camp. You can you can leave your legs on the road, whatever. Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, Regis has never had feet. Yeah, like yeah. they can say he overtrained, whatever, but he's never had feet. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing that I don't get. And when you really understand boxing, like you look at that. Like I look at every fighter, and I look at what they don't do. And the number one thing I look at first is their feet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 Roberto Duran's old trainer, Ray Arcel said it. He said, um, he said feet. He said feet are number one. You know what I mean? Roberto Duran one time, they made a comment about Roberto Duran working with Regis and trying to show him feet at one at one point. You know what I'm saying? In Houston, like your feet are everything. And I just hate it, man. There's so many fighters, man, they don't they're not open minded to see it themselves and their coaches aren't aren't really teaching them. Like yeah. Regis has come a long way. Off his, off his own talent and ability, and he has been showing some great things. You know, he wouldn't be there. But in a fight of this magnitude, like, I just don't get why that wasn't, you know what I mean, yeah. why that wasn't a point.